Then they get depressed. Then they get weary. And then the next thing they give up. But, you know, you've got to be able to call something for what it is. So I said, this, this little band of light that only lasts this many hours, I'm going to call that day. And this band of darkness, I'm going to call night. And, and I want you to get this, because this, this, this is beautiful. Although he called, and this is really important, although he called the light day, let me show you how broadly he expanded that. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the evening that was night and the morning that was day, he collectively put them together and the two of them, the light and the darkness, ended up being called the same thing that light alone was also being called day. He called the darkness and the light day. He swallowed up darkness with the light. Like, oh death, where is your sting? Where is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, you want me to tell you where it is? If you're out here walking among the dead, buried bodies, hoping for a resurrection, he said, come on, catch on, copy God. I am the resurrection. That's right. I am the resurrection. you start stepping on that door threshold you're getting ready to walk into things that have not been uttered and they're going to be spoken to you in a high and new and glorious and precious way Hallelujah. praise the name of God now you understand this copy God at article number five your life, you got some good things that you cause to happen just by your your dexterity, just by your determination, just by your faith, just by your sticking in. And then you have to understand, yeah, the darkness is still there, though. But yeah, but I got this part here. This is called the light, and this is just the light. Yeah, uh -huh, that's called the day. You mean? Yeah, that's just the day. That's the day. Uh -huh, okay. Now. Um, what do you call the light period and the dark period together? What do the two of them equally end up making? Well, they end up making a thing. A thing. No, no, that's not what the communist said. Well, they end up making a passing of time. No, that's not what the communist said. Did you want me to read to you what the communist said? Okay. The communist says the two of them, both the darkness and the day, combined were called a day. A day. So you have to understand that part of the day, part of the living cycle, part part of the of the going through our journey is going to have light and it's going to have darkness. It's going to have good and it's going to have bad. It is program in us. The Bible says that the sentence of death is written in us. When you take that into the abstract comparative, then if the sentence of death is written in us, the sentence of life is also written in us. Because everything is a wave. Everything is an up followed by a down. A down followed by an up. It is always that way. It will always be that way. That is how it is. So, the umbra, the shadow, is always followed by the removal of the shadow, the umbra. And then there is light. It is always the corresponding flux that will happen because it is written in the stars above. It's written on the earth below. It is the essence of the journey that we are on. Doesn't mean 
that it will never, 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 never end. But let's stick with it and let's finish it Amen. the right Amen. way. Amen. Let's copy God. And if we copy God, we will be able to do it correctly. Amen. We'll be able to do it correctly. Now I can stop there and that would be a sermon. <laughs> I'm just getting started. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I take that back. Inside my face. Take it away. I'm happy. Okay. Now, I will give you a chance. I mean, I guess everybody here knows that there's a bathroom, what, upstairs or downstairs? Okay, say it loud enough so I can hear you. Where is it? Bathroom? It's down here, around to the corner. Around the corner there's a bathroom. So if anyone is in, you know, um, uh, dire need, uh, just excuse yourself and uh, and go take care of it. We'll let if you'll believe this, have to lock the door if you're going to leave us in the middle of no, the I said if you believe it. <laughs> I hope you're smart enough not to believe that. Okay. So, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. God's, that's all part of number five. That's all part of this division thing that's happening. Now it's going back to the waters. It's going back to that water that, that was just sort of let suspended, right? You know, he moved over the waters. Now this knowledge of the light has happened. There's this division. There's this understanding of the dark. And now he's also adding now to the waters. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And let there be land. Let there be a place where people can stand on the earth. Let there be a place where people can build houses and have families and have have a life to live, plant gardens, be farmers. Let them have a place to live so that they're just not out there bobbling on the water. And plan begin to come to, together. But not until he went through all this process of understanding day and night being a day. Of going through all that, getting the knowledge there. Getting the awareness of the darkness there. Then he finished this thing about the plan of substantiation, materialization, the firmament, the, the ground firmament. So, so I, I think we're talking about the sky. Well, if that's what you think he's talking about, I do too, but I also think that you'll find there's a connection between that and the earth. So hang and hold. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now we're in list six, six uh, or we're in, uh, sorry, not list six, we're in the list of copy God, and we're down here on the sixth entry. And that is called the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and so it was. From this number six, all of the way down to, and that is verse seven, all of the way down to verse 17, I consider that all as part of number six. So the firmament and the land, they all come together in the clump of this one designation. And that's how I have done this list. My next number of the list does not start until verse 17. But in between there, the waters under the heaven are gathered together in one place because uh, that all seems to have to, for, uh, have to proceed and let the dry land appear. He's, he's, he's connected it. And I can go in to all kinds of things like that but basically we could say hey if you don't control the heavens and all the downpours of the rain and all this stuff that can cause floods or all this this you don't control the heavens and get it right you're never going to have a dry place where you can have ground you're going to have to get the you're going to have to get the skyways where the clouds are and the skyways that contain and can hold all this moisture pour it out down to the earth you're going to have to get that in order so that there's enough uh, differentiation, enough on and off, so that we can have some dry land. And you wouldn't have to be too smart to know about that. 
so that it all comes together. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters, he called the seas. And he saw it was good. And he, I don't know how to preach the good thing to you. Or as, as it was to be, you don't have to do that. You should be able to see that once you make a designation of a plan, you know, you've got this, you've got this little, this dry spot of earth. And someone said, yeah, but you know, those are way over, uh, you know, by Italy. I don't want to live in Italy. I want to live in Canada or the United States. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to get dry land somewhere, and then you can just keep developing it until you got a spot for your uh, heels uh, in the western continent area. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, fruit, so forth. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after its kind, and so forth. Now we are seeing an acceleration as this light, as some of this moving of the Spirit has begun to get in place. There is an undermining of the elements taking place and a rooting of the spirit to spirit. Uh, energy into those elements. Now, once that begins to get rooted in, and then you say, now let the trees this, all of a sudden you see, it just start happening. Now now they suddenly start bearing fruit. Now they start, suddenly start reproducing. It's, it's an acceleration that is happening. Okay? And after all that happens, God saw that it was good. And verse 14, and God said that there be lights in the firmament. Now, was I right on what I was saying about the light being a knowledge? Well, sure I was. Because the sun, that is to be uh, the kind of light that we call a different kind of day, you know, called call day, wasn't even created until the 14th verse. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for the signs and seasons and for years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven uh, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made the two great lights to rule the day, lesser, night to, uh, lesser light to rule the sun, He made the stars also. So we see that there had to be this knowledge light before we we're going to become concerned about some big major uh, 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 sphere uh, that was going to be called the sun. That once once you got all this this underlay done, once you got all this designation done, now you are ready to go into big things. Now you can do some really big things. Now you got all this earth thing where you got all kinds of things happening. Someone says, well, how could those people be living without the sun? Oh, my goodness. You know that there's bugs that have body electricity that when they fly, they light up a, a good deal of space. And when you think of it in proportion to the size of their body, it's quite significant the amount of space. Um, we don't have to get into propositions or presupposing of all the things that could have been on Earth at the time uh, going way, way back there, of uh, the electromagnetic flows that 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 uh, uh, aura over the earth and, and lit up the earth. Uh, we don't need to get into all those kind of things. Uh, all we need to get into is copying God. And we know that whatever he did worked. And by the time he was done with this plan and, and all these creations begin to, begin to take place, now he was ready to, to affect the heavens big time. Affect the moon, affect the, affect the sun, to, to put them into place and get the right proportion of everything uh, for this planet that he was just now beginning to give form to, uh, because the you know there was no solid earth and he had to start making this solid earth and start making these these creatures. And someone says, so you think that those creatures that were on the earth? Well, I don't want to say they couldn't have been. But it's a really good chance that they were only created in thought. Just like it says in um, uh, uh, Genesis, um, in, in the second chapter of Genesis, uh, it talks about, um, uh, in chapter 2, 
these are the, uh, verse 4, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. And the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to tell the ground. So now we've got a scripture that says both plants and mammals, man being a mammal, uh, before they ever were on earth, they were constructed in what we call a Soundtron framework. The, the plans, everything, they were created just as they were going to be. They were like a list of destiny. And that list was all written out. It was all planned, and then it was just a matter of bringing forth that list, and pretty soon they were just not like a list any longer that was before they were planted on the earth. So it says, I thought it was just the plants. I don't know, it's the plants, it was also mammals. So these mammals that we're reading about before the sun could very likely have been a part of, of those that had not yet been planted, except by this presupposing of the imagining capability of, of our minds through the power of God to be able to begin to create things that, that so that the Bible says you begin to call those things that are not as though they are. And so that things that are not seen are made of things that do not appear. Another scripture in the Bible. Once you get into this kind of mentality, and, and, and you know how, how to pull uh, that, that starter cord and, and, and rip, rip up that engine and get it going. Uh, the grass can't do anything but be mowed once you walk that direction. Amen? Because there's power in that kind of faith. There's power in copying God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So if you just... Since the kids you don't understand, I have tremendous problems being able to sleep. I just can't sleep. I'm just so nervous about all the things that are happening, and, and I've just been like a wrecked ship. Uh, just all I, I've been crushed from one horrible experience to another, and, and I can just see more coming. And I don't know how to turn left. I don't know how to turn right. And I, and I just feel like sometimes I don't even know if I can go on, but except for the mercy of God, you know. And, and you know. I, I want to tell you, I'm not going to say to you, start counting how many sheep are jumping over some some rock or, or something. What I'm going to tell you is start creating, start copying God. And start 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 putting these creations, you know. And start creating these certain things uh, that, uh, though they are not, they are. And and start, start uh, moving them, you know, with your mind. Uh, you know, if, if it's, if it's uh, uh, a person, you can you can say, okay, stand up. And you can see them stand up. Now, move forward. I said, move forward. <laughs> Go over to the chair in the back and sit down. Do what I say. Don't look at me. Don't question it. I am commanding this in the spirit of my spirit. Because that's how God did it. And I'm copying God. And it worked for him. And God is saying it will work for me too. And so you begin to send that, that energy. And that person goes and sits down. Now, come to me, sweetheart. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do. It is absolutely fantastic what you can do. I don't know if feel some people get scared. I don't know if I want to feel <laughs> ah, Well, the most powerful mind is the mind that wins out. And uh, uh, it's almost terrifying what can happen to when some of these women get in, on the track, you know. Uh, the men have got to work double time. But, uh, you know, they can do surprising things. Amen. Right. Amen. Okay, let's get back to our uh, thank you. We're on the list. We're on the list. And it's all Bible. And it's what the Bible is saying. Now we go to verse 17. Number 7 on the list. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and the night. You mean 
God started off with all this creative, imaginative power. Finally reached the point where he could materialize things and then designate those things to be rulers over great mounts of space to rule over darkness to be rulers. It's incredible what you can do. If you will just allow this teaching to exalt your horn, people will start thinking you're Gabriel because they'll think you're blowing Gabriel's horn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will just allow this thinking to soak into you, sink into you, and begin to dominate it. I'm telling you, you will begin to discover that someday there will be groups of people and ten people will get together and they'll begin to war him from where they are over in Afghanistan or Iraq or Iran or wherever they need to be. They'll be able to start perfecting these wars from some other location remote location, far away. Just like it said in the Bible, when the stars fought in their courses, some energy was praising God up in the heavens. Some believer, some person, some queen of the mind was turned on to believing that even though a king and his army and all his forces, powerful person, was going to be present, that she just as who she was could make this prayer. And the, the stars in heaven would fight in their courses for her deliverance. That's Bible. We can either just turn off the Bible and not believe it or really turn it on instead of just having it on so low that we can't even understand what it's saying. Let's turn it up and let's really hear what it has to say. That's what we're doing today. We're magnifying the Word of God. Amen. We're magnifying the Word of God. Amen. We're, we're turning up the volume because we're here today to find out how to copy God on this list of God. And I'll read it to you. Amen. Praise God. And then, in verse 20, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature. Now the spirit was moving, now he's got the creature moving. And he's got all this latolution, and he's got all of this, you know, special kind of... Um, of, of, of land illusion happening. Awesome. All from this beginning. Now, verse 22, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. God blessed them. You know, when Jesus gave the example, and of course we're going to be preaching on that, teaching on that, I think it's number two, about the list of the Ten Commandments. They're quite different from what most people would imagine. But when we start getting into some of this other revelation, it's going to be absolutely amazing. But when we just look at this, and we begin to see this in the light of the progression that is happening through this step-by-step uh, -step creation, step-by-step -step, uh, road of, uh, of uh, tremendous miracle power, authority and power. Um, it takes us to this number eight on the list. And God blessed them and saying, be fruitful and multiply. 
we don't really always understand the, the power of blessing. Most people translate blessing as something for themselves. Oh, I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed. A person came over tonight and brought us dinner. Oh, we're just so blessed. But, ladies and gentlemen, the power to bless is creative. God blessed them. So be fruitful and multiply. You can bless someone and change their hormones. You can bless someone and change their whole life because you have the anointing to do so and you have followed the list. And you're in sync. And you're stepping into to the melody of God. And you're on the dance floor. And you are leading the dance. Praise the name of God. And as you are leading this dance, and you are going for, for wow, this designation puts you in such a powerful place that suddenly the creations of, of, of the world, all these people out there, all these individuals out there, all these animals out there, they're all involved. They're all involved in being able to be affected by you because you have the power to bless. Now, how you bless them is so important. You know, when you're blessing, you may create animals that are not edible. Although your first intent would be, bless this state, God, to my health and nourishment. And that state belongs to a cow. They bless this because you're getting a benefit out of it. And that's how we so attach ourselves to the, to the blessings. But that misses the whole boat. The power to bless is much more creative than that. Because there are animal support systems out there. And plant systems out there. That support the animals. And vice versa. And as we begin to understand that. Our blessing has to be expounded. To the extent that it supports these systems. That are support systems. Now, a lot of times, these support systems are not edible. <laughs> and we have some prophet come along like Moses that says, if the hoof is divided a certain way, thou shalt not eat this creature. It's unclean. You know, they had this thing about eating food. And they said, you know, when you, you have a sacrifice, you cook up this meal, and then you start eating this food, you can eat it the first day, and you're also allowed to eat it the second day. But anything that's left over after two days, you have to burn up and destroy. You mustn't leave it around. Because they did not have refrigeration. And they lived in a hot land. And germs, if I, once you got past that second day, bam, germs could become, begin to be toxic. Now, they didn't understand necessarily all that. But they understood to follow a list because God understood. So they're following the list. They might be saying, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. I ever heard. Look at that. Look at that. The rest of that chicken that was left. Look at those are steaks. Come on. He said, you don't listen to me. You go ahead and eat it. You'll have to bear the consequences. And a lot of people did. And they got sick. Some people died. The Bible says in the New Testament, those that partake of the communion unworthily is the reason why there are many people that are sick and many people that die. It's Bible. That's what it says. So there's a plan. There's a list. If you don't follow the rules, which is just for your benefit, if you don't understand the real power of blessing, is it just to bless somebody because they gave you something? 
but you have the power to affect everything that's going on in the animal kingdom, in the plant kingdom. Things that are going on in heaven. So that even the stars, which are the angels of God, will fight in their courses for you. You don't have to worry about some gang out there. you got a gang up there that'll make that gang out there look like street trash. Come on, listen to this word. This is the list of God. Hallelujah. And I'm copying God. Amen. And you want to copy God. This is a copy list of copying God. <laughs> wow. You can affect how things multiply, or you can even affect things so that they don't multiply anymore. I'm giving an example with my precious grandma. When we lived in Indiana, Roachland, you could hardly walk into any house without ever so often seeing one of those critters appear on the wall. And you go over there to get them, and they're so fast. And so smart that when you just come toward them, they just drop. And it wouldn't hurt their bodies at all. They just drop. <laughs> and then they knew that down below was, was you know, furniture junk. And they just take, hide, hide in all that uh, scribbleina. And there's no way that you find that, that roach. And there's roaches, they can go inside your television and live off the tar that coats the wire joints or the circuit joints because their body is capable of turning even toxin into edible food. <laughs> now I don't know who created that idea, whether it was some incredible uh, uh, breeder roach that just started breeding and, 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 and you know he was this, a survival of the survivalist but it doesn't really matter all I know is my grandma when our big house that we moved into was invaded it was invaded with these crazy roaches and you could kill a hundred of them and five hundred more would appear it was just absolutely a toxin that you couldn't seem to get rid of. And I remember Grandma says, one time I was standing, sitting at the table looking out the window and, and I heard her uh, step on the roach. And, and she hit it so hard and fast that I heard it crush its body. That was unusual. She said, you dirty devil you, I got you. <laughs> and then she says, dear God, she says, please get rid of the roaches in this house. Please get rid of them. Please bless me and our house family to not have to live and be bed partners, house partners, dinner partners with these terrible devil roaches. You know what happened? It's a true story. The roaches started disappearing. I'm trying to think, what's happened to the roaches? They're disappearing. And about two months later, I went down after all the roaches were gone. And I it went into the basement, and I had a flashlight, and I saw something moving. I thought, what in the world? And I started looking, and the place was full of long-legged daddy spiders. Now, these are totally harmless critters. But they killed, they captured and killed those roaches. That prayer of Grandma caused them to come. And shortly thereafter, they all left. After they killed all the roaches, they left. They were gone. We had no roaches and we had no spiders. Because Grandma had a blessing faith. She blessed the home to not have them. So you can not only affect multiplication, you can affect anti-multiplication. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can say to the womb, start producing. Or you can say to the womb, seal it up. <laughs> Just depending on what we're talking about. 
Oh, the, the Bible for this, which it says that, you know, we don't, it says, we do not want to repopulate the earth with crooks, uh, mental criminals, and all these bad people. He said, you know, we've got to be careful, because if we don't take control on this, we don't take understanding on this, the whole world will be full of these criminals, and there won't be any ground to stand on for people that are sane. Okay. You have to take authority. <clears throat> and God, as I, in this teaching, of of exalting the horn of praise so that we have that power and have that authority are enabled then by that authority to bring those praises take those praises into the heavens and so, so yeah now what am I going to do going up there into the heavens and oh, praising God when you can go up into the heavens you get out it's just like it's just like being able to go somewhere and, and get in a state of weightlessness where you have no gravity on you. Well, by going up into the heavens with your spirit, which is also representing your body, even though your body is down below on the earth, you are in a weightlessness of sin. You get up there and you have a weightlessness of sin. You're in a weightless condition. No sin, no weight of sin. And you're up there where you can just float free in the spirit. In, in the spirit that you are. And now when you pray, there is absolutely no hindrances. There's nothing to forbid you. There's nothing to stop you. There's nothing that can tell you no if you don't want to hear that said. You just open your heart, open your mind, open your soul, open your faith, and just turn on the strings of deliverance. And what you have done, the Bible says, what you loose in heaven will be loosed on earth. Oh, yeah. Amen. What you bind in heaven will be bound on earth. No wonder we want to go up there by this exalted horn experience and praise God in heaven. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That was number eight on the list. Now let me explain to you because I got, remember I have six different lists. I'm still on list one. And on this list here, there are 15 entries. So I have just done number eight. And so I have seven left. And after I do those seven, that will complete this list. And then I just have five more lists left. We could probably get done by three o'clock if I didn't stop. Of course, we're going to have to splash over to the next day, but not yet. And in a little bit, we'll take a break and allow people to go to the restroom and allow people to get some refreshments. I don't know, but I suppose there are refreshments somewhere. Are they here anywhere? They're upstairs? Yeah, they're in the upper upper chamber. Oh, where is that? Okay. Now let me go on, though. I'm not ready for that yet. Okay. So now, uh, we go to chapter 2, Genesis. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. And I would begin to try to do the teaching on the Sabbath here tonight. Because if I did the full teaching on the Sabbath, I could not finish it in a week. But I will share something here in this list, this neat, incredible list. I will share with you something from the, uh, the Peace Bible which we have not gotten out to the world yet, which shows on the front of it the candelabras, or the candelabra, and this Godwin that came into the, the church building, even though there was no fans on, no wind of any kind, and blew on the flames and elongated them, and they became fire doves. And you can see this was actual picture taken of that meeting. But if we go in here and we turn the pages and we get into the to Genesis,
and we look at some of this business um, of, of God, what happened on the seventh day, and uh, then we find something absolutely beautiful. Um, so remember, we're reading chapter 2 and verse 2. So let's see here, chapter 2, and here we go. Manifest Bible, Peace Bible. Chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore the heavens and the earth were prepared, and all the hosts of heaven and the earth put into disposition. Now that is so beautiful and that is so important. Because that really sounds like what we've been preaching on. That everything that led up to number seven day was all part of a preparation. And all part of a disposition of plan. It wasn't just a freak follow-up. It wasn't just bumper cars. It wasn't just overspill or undertow. It was a real host of events that were categorically destined to happen because they had been put on a list to happen. They were, they were part of God's list. And that's why we are copying God on this list. Genesis 2 2, Peace Bible. For during the seventh generation age, Yahweh ceased, Yahweh's angel said, angelship, to soul Adam. The Bible says that God breathed into Adam, and he became a living soul. Capital S. So it was on the seventh yom, the Sabbath, Yahweh cast yourself down into mortal flesh. Now, that would take some time to explain. But people are out there warring over trying to understand the Sabbath and the rest of the Sabbath, what the, coming into the rest. And they think it's all about taking a day off. And there are some people ready to almost kill over that. In fact, there were cases in the Old Testament that they were willing to kill people if they didn't keep that kind of a Sabbath. But that wasn't even what the Sabbath was really about. Because while many of the human beings were created on the sixth day, Adam was created on the seventh day. Totally opposite from what anybody thinks. But if I had the time, I would prove it to you by the scriptures. Because that seventh day was not a 24-hour day. It was a generation age according to the second chapter of Genesis. Which says in verse 4, these, talking about all these days, are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So in the day means that that day was a generation. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So we are talking about this seventh generation, this Adamic revelation, this souling because before Adam, there were other human beings. And they were all part of those genetic rivers, Pison, Gihon, Hedekel, Euphrates, that the Bible tells about, that they found bones of, that they call primitive people. Some were primitive people, some were not primitive people. But anyway, uh, I'm not referring to that list I gave, but I'm referring to some of the bones that they found. So, that seventh day that they're trying to make a little world, a little world, a little 24-hour thing, that if you don't take that Sunday off or, or Saturday off, whichever one you call the seventh, that you're doomed to hell. But Paul says, don't, don't 
don't worship one day over another. Don't give emphasis to one day over another. He, he had caught on to the revelation. And so, that's on this list that we're doing. That's on this list, God's list. All that incorporates that. We could stop on each one of these, and we could preach and teach on each one of these lists that I have just, just give me a little jag of information, and we could take this all the way into such a grand and glorious uh, opening of liberty uh, that before we were finished, you would be waltzing mm -hmm. in the blue Danube of the glories of God. Instead of birds singing, it would be angels singing. Hallelujah. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. He finished his work. There finally comes a time when you make the transition from the animal to the mortal, to the low life, to the different life, to the soul life. And you finally have to recognize one day, whether you've achieved everything like that perfectly in your body, but you have achieved it in your mind. You have to recognize you have you have finished it. Now you can add Alpha. The Bible says, I am the beginning and the ending. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Copy. Copy Jesus. Copy God. You write a book, don't ever not finish it by saying you know, something that means that it's not done. Be sure one day that you get it done. So you can say, it is finished. Praise be the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That was nine. Now ten. Now the work keeps advancing. There's all kinds of scripture in between. But what it goes into next for 10, verse 7, chapter 2. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. And I've really already commented on that. We call this photo translation. And verse 8, if we go into 11, and the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Wow. It's another act of photo translation. Don't make a man and did not, not even have a home or a garden to put him. Some women, I want a man, I want a husband, I want a man, I want a husband. Some, some men, I want a woman, I want a wife, I want a woman, I want a wife. They have no idea how the nature of the man or the nature of the woman is, the kind of things that's necessary to develop so that you can deal with this merging program that doesn't happen at, at the first onset of that very personal, intricate expression. But beyond that, you gotta have a plan, you gotta have a list, you gotta have understanding, you gotta have light, knowledge. You gotta know what to do with that man. You gotta know what to do with that woman. You're gonna put her in the outback, the outlands, or you're gonna put her in the garden. And is that garden so full of weeds that it'll take full time for him to weed it, and you won't even be in, hardly have time, he won't even have time to consider you and your needs? Because you gave him such a big job that there's no time left for you? You gotta know what to do with your man. You gotta know what to do with your woman. This was a beautiful plan. He made a man, he admitted, this man's made out of dust. He's just human. But I want to do something good with this guy. I want to put him in the garden that I'm going to call Eden. It's a beautiful place. It's a world that he'll dream about. 
It's lovely. There's delicious fruits growing from the trees. You got to know what to do with your man. I want to get married. I just, I just want a guy. I just really want a guy. I just want a gal. I just really want a gal. Gotta have a plan. You need a plan. What are you gonna do with that guy if you get him, or that gal if you get her? You need to copy God. Now, if you got enough power to create and form some man just out of dust, being like he's just basically naked of ideas, he's just earthly. You say, you know, and all he knows is things that are dust particle ideas. And you got enough energy and enough ideo ideology to create that. Then you need to be able to add to that. And create the Garden of Eden. And now that you've had experience of how the serpent can come in and disrupt the Garden of Eden, you need to plan ahead of time with a God plan how that you can put a cherub at the top of that tree so if that Satan devil serpent ever climbs it again, that that cherub angel will put his foot down on the top of the head of that serpent, which is a prophecy that you've got the right to do, and beat out that devil and fulfill the scripture of Jesus said, I will be lifted up as a serpent. And then the understanding what that really means. I preach these there are so many people know. That's, right. That's number 10, number 11. Three left, then we'll take a break. Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden. My man doesn't want to go in the Garden of Eden. Doesn't want to go. My wife doesn't want to go into the Garden of Eden. I can't force him. Really? Why did you even create him for Says I didn't really create him. Yes, you did. All those lures. Hi. You created him, all right. You created her, all right. You created him, all right. From the dust, too. <laughs> now you created the Garden of Eden. You can't even get the man in there. Can't get the woman in there. Come on! Now is when you're going to have to get your horn exalted. You're going to have to get up there in the heavens and start doing some weightlessness of sin. Weightlessness, no sin. Get up there and start creating. Start singing to that man. You will like it in Eden. <laughs> Yes, oh, yes, you will. Oh, you will, my kitty, Eden. Yes, oh, yes, you will. And you got to start believing that you can change things. You got to preach it like that. You got to teach it like that. You got to live it like that. You got to think it like that. And then pretty soon, pretty soon. You know what, sweetheart? I think I do want to go to you. Really? And that's your own idea, isn't it? <laughs> Must be. Okay, let's go. Whew. Wow. And God took the man and put him in the garden. <laughs> Copy God! Copy God! Hallelujah! Copy God! Took the man and put him in Eden. Okay. 
Number 13 on the list. Verse 16, chapter 2. And the Lord God commanded the man. He said, every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. <laughs> oh boy, could this ever get into World War Three or Four? And God said, it's not good that man should be alone. But there's got to be some rules. There's got to be a list. The day is made up of the light and the darkness. There's the things that you can do, there's the things that you can't do. There's the trees that you can eat from, and there's the trees that you shouldn't eat from. Praise the name of God. And you aren't necessarily going to get it done by woozy woozy and around. You're going to have to have that exalted horn of power and authority so that you are commanding it in the spirit world to happen the way it needs to happen. you got to command it. Praise God. Ooh. Number 14. Verse 21. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. I'm taking this just slightly out of Context, but it fits. Sometimes when your partner is just not following along on the God list as you think you have a plan, and you think that's how God had a plan, which you may or may not, but let's suppose you do, and it's just not working out, then you got to go to this direction. <laughs> And God caused a deep sleep to fall on the man. A deep sleep to fall on the woman. And what do we call that? We could say that the influences of the Pleiades begin to come down by your direction. Begin to influence that man or that woman dulling their Leanings till they that subject sort of falls into the sleep zone mm -hmm. because if you don't do that, there's no way that that man is ever going to understand to give birth when he thinks he's a man. Somebody tells him, We're going to open you up, and we're going to take out of you a rib, and we're going to make a man. And there's nobody going to really be able to understand that. Yeah, does everyone hear what I'm saying? Especially the man. What are you talking about? I'm going to take out my rib and going to, going to make a, something out of that. Out of that. I don't want my rib messed with. And that would be natural for them to say that. I don't want my rib messed with. I got other plans for my rib. <laughs> but you do. The Lord caused the deep sleep to fall on him. And then he took it. And made it happen. That's on the list, number 14. We're starting to get real feisty now. As you progress up this list, you see things accelerating. You see more, more authority taking place. You, you, you are getting confidence because you start seeing all of these things happen. All this understanding, all this enlightenment is coming into you. Now all of a sudden you're talking like someone that knows how to how to run a business, like someone that knows how to operate a vehicle, uh, to to make a big ship go on the ocean. You got authority, and now you're saying, "Come on, I can do it. I can do it. Let's go. Let's get this thing do. I command it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it." In the name of my faith. I command it according to the list. Because I'm copying God. One more on the list. Before we take a break. Chapter 3.
I was wrong. There's two more on the list. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verse 8. Chapter 8, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the, of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said, Where are you, my love? Remember my blog I did? Where are you, my love? Uh, I'm hiding. I heard you coming and I thought I should hide. Why would you want to hide? You haven't hid before. Well, I found out I'm naked. So that's why I hid myself. Who told you you were naked? <laughs> Have you eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee thou should not eat? Uh, well, you yeah. know, <laughs> the woman convinced me I should do it. I mean, it's a sad story. It's not exactly that way when I would be the teacher. But, you know, that's number 15. And, you know, what do I see out of that? What applies to this? It just shows how that a person can totally mess up a great Garden of Eden experience. <laughs> Amen? You go all the trouble of creating something. And then you mess it up by fooling around with something you were told not to fool around with that was not on the list. Praise God. You hear me, folks? Mm -hmm. 